enzyme inhibitors are molecules that interfere with the catalysis sometimes slowing down the reaction or otherwise entirely inhibiting the complete reaction since enzymes are responsible for catalysis of almost all cellular chemical reactions they are of tremendous applications in various fields of humanity for example in pharmaceutical science etc for example you know that aspirin a medicine commonly available in the market is used to relieve pain how does aspirin relieve our pain aspirin is acetyl salicylate this aspirin inhibits an enzyme that catalyzes the first step in the synthesis of a group of compounds called prostaglandins then what is a prostaglandin prostaglandin is a group of compounds one of their effect in the body is to cause pain so whenever prostaglandins are produced we feel pain so aspirin inhibits the production of prostaglandins thereby relieving the sense of pain from the body like that there are many enzymes which are used for therapeutic purposes you may be knowing that uh, if we have excess cholesterol in the body then we can use some drugs these drugs are actually competitive inhibitors of some key enzymes in the synthesis of cholesterol by the liver in our body like that there are so many examples broadly enzyme inhibition can be classified into two reversible inhibition and irreversible inhibition an inhibition is said to be reversible when the inhibiting molecule can separate and go away from the enzyme molecule after being bound once which means even if the inhibitor is bound to the enzyme under some conditions the inhibitor may go away from the enzyme and that enzyme will be functional again but if the inhibitor molecule permanently disables the enzyme then we say it is irreversible inhibition and what about the reversible types of inhibition actually four types of reversible inhibition are mentioned in the reference books and the first three of them are mentioned in this slide while the last the one the fourth one is mentioned in a different slide competitive inhibition uncompetitive inhibition mixed inhibition and also non competitive inhibition and how do we recognize them it is very simple we look where the inhibitor is binding and what type of complex is formed look at this slide competitive inhibition the inhibitor is binding at the active site of the enzyme where the substrate is supposed to bind so in competitive inhibition either the substrate is binding to the active site or the inhibitor is binding while look at the case of uncompetitive inhibition in this case the inhibitor is binding to a site other than the active site actually the substrate is binding at the active site whether the inhibitor is present or not and if the inhibitor is present it is binding at a site other than the active site point 1 point 2 it is always binding with the enzyme substrate complex producing enzyme substrate inhibitor complex this uncompetitive inhibitor never binds on a free enzyme it binds only on an enzyme substrate complex you come to the case of mixed inhibition in the case of mixed inhibition 
the inhibitor is binding at a site other than the active site, then how does it differ from uncompetitive inhibition? In the case of mixed inhibition, the inhibitor may bind either with the free enzyme or with the enzyme substrate complex. So, accordingly, it may produce either the enzyme inhibitor complex or enzyme substrate inhibitor complex. This is a section taken from the Principles of Biochemistry, Leninger. I think I have sent this chapter to you as a, an e-book in the beginning of this chapter. You open that page and read it. It is chapter 6. You try to find out which is the page number, etc. And if you didn't get this page, uh, then you just tell me, I will send it to you. See, we found earlier that LB plot or a doubled reciprocal plot has two functions. One is to identify the exact Vmax and the Km value. The other is to identify presence of any type of inhibition. Here is a slide. It shows a doubled reciprocal plot. As you made one earlier yourself. Look at this graph. There is a point called 1 by Vmax. Can you see it here? And can you identify where is minus 1 by Km? I hope you understood where is minus 1 by Km. And towards the right side, you can see alpha is equal to 1, alpha is equal to 2, alpha is equal to 3, etc. And an arrow mark is given upwards saying that concentration of inhibitor is increasing. So these alpha values indicate alpha 1 means no inhibitor is present. How is the plot going? You can see that graph is having a minus 1 by Km value extremely towards the left. Which means Km value is lower if there is no inhibitor. And there is a particular 1 by Vmax value. As alpha becomes 2 and then alpha becomes 3, you see concentration of inhibitor is increasing. But there is no change in 1 by Vmax. That means there is, there is no change in Vmax. And maximum velocity remains constant even in presence of a competitive inhibitor. While you look at the case of minus 1 by Km, that minus 1 by Km value is coming more and more towards the zero value. That means more and more towards the right side, which means it is increasing. But what's increasing? Km value is increasing. Presence of a competitive inhibitor increases Km value while it does not alter the maximum velocity. Keep it in your mind. So by looking at a double reciprocal plot, we can identify whether there is competitive inhibition or not.
Now, here is the LB plot for uncompetitive inhibition. Here also in this graph, three plots are given. Alpha dash is equal to 1 means no inhibitor is there. And alpha dash 1.5 means there is inhibitor. Alpha dash 2 means there is more inhibitor. The inhibitor concentration is increasing. You can see three lines. What about the 1 by V max and minus 1 by Km? You can see this 1 by V max values are different for each of the plot. And in this graph, as the concentration of inhibitor increases, they are going up. 1 by V max is going up, which means V max is decreasing. As the concentration of inhibitor, uncompetitive inhibitor increases, V max value, maximum velocity decreases. And accordingly, what's the value of minus 1 by km? You can see minus 1 by km. That value also is changing. How is it changing? Can you identify? This is an LB plot for mixed inhibition. Here also three plots are given on the same graph. In the lowermost plot, there is no inhibitor. As we go up, inhibitor concentration increases. And what happens to 1 by V max and therefore V max as the concentration increases? You also should be able to find out what happens to minus 1 by Km. Tell me whether it is increasing or decreasing. Here is the case of non-competitive inhibition. This also is reversible type of inhibition. In this type, the inhibitor binds to a site other than the active site. But it may also be the allosteric site. What is an allosteric site? We will see it later. That means there are two separate binding sites. One for the enzyme. I mean, one for the substrate on the enzyme, the other for the inhibitor. That means enzyme substrate complex may be formed when there is no inhibitor or enzyme inhibitor complex may be formed or enzyme substrate inhibitor complex may be formed. The difference is that this may be an allosteric site also. This is the LB plot, double reciprocal plot for non-competitive inhibition. Look at the values of 1 by V max and minus 1 by Km. In the lower plot, there is no inhibitor. You see minus I at the tip, no inhibitor. In the upper plot, it is plus I, which means inhibitor is present. So what happens to 1 by V max? when inhibitor is added. Is it increasing or decreasing? You tell me. Accordingly, what happens to Vmax? And also, what happens to minus 1 by Km when inhibitor is added? Accordingly, what happens to Km value? You try to find out and tell me later. This is a paragraph taken from Leninger's textbook on irreversible inhibition. You try to find out this section of the textbook and read it. And if you don't have the page with you, tell me, I will pause it for you. Here is the case of irreversible enzyme inhibition. In this slide, the enzyme given is thymidylate synthase. You can see the enzyme written in the slide. What the enzyme is doing? Deoxyribose 5-phosphate DUMP, uridine monophosphate, is transformed into DTMP, 
thymidin monophosphate how look at the carbon number 5 in the substrate carbon number 5 is bearing a hydrogen atom in the product it is bearing a methyl group that means uracil is transformed into thymine that is the normal reaction and what is the substrate here the substrate is dumb uridine monophosphate and on the upper hand side upper right hand side there is the inhibitor given it is 5 fluorouracil and what's there on carbon number 5 of this inhibitor there is a fluorine atom this is the inhibitor irreversible inhibitor if the original substrate is binding with the active site of thymine dilates in this reaction takes place no problem but if 5 fluorouracil binds at the active site Point number one, reaction cannot take place. Point number two, the inhibitor does not go away from the active site, which means that enzyme molecule is now useless. It is permanently inactive, inhibited. This, this is suicide substrate because the substrate also is lost. The substrate also, I mean, here this substrate, the 5-fluorouracil, which is the inhibitor, is a suicide substrate. Substrate analog inhibition is another type of irreversible inhibition. The example given is chymotrypsin. You know that chymotrypsin is a protein digesting enzyme in our alimentary canal produced by the pancreas in the inactive form. The normal substrate is actually protein. There is a TPCK. What is TPCK? TPCK, tocyl L phenyl alanine chloromethyl ketone, the name is given at the bottom, is an irreversible inhibitor. It is a substrate analog, which means it is similar in structure to the original substrate. 
and the enzyme cannot identify whether it is the it is a substrate or whether it is a substrate analog only whoever is coming to the active site it will bind and if the inhibitor is binding reaction will not take place it is just like a competitive inhibitor but the difference is that this is irreversible Allosteric enzymes are a very important class of enzymes present in almost all living cells. Why they are important? Because they are used to regulate a metabolic pathway. They are used to increase or decrease the speed of formation of a product. Or increase or decrease the speed of a metabolic pathway. You might have heard of glycolysis or cup cycle or synthesis of cholesterol all those things that are there in your syllabus in this semester we will see them in detail the rate of these pathways is regulated by using allosteric enzymes these enzymes have two receptor sites one is for the original substrate the other is for the allosteric modulator use the term allosteric modulator the allosteric modulator is binding at a site other than the active site these modulators are of two types allosteric inhibitor or allosteric activator if the speed of the pathway is to be increased so that more of the product is formed then allosteric activator binds at the site on the other hand, if the speed of the pathway is to be reduced in order to decrease the rate of the product formation, then allosteric inhibitor binds at the site. And we also call it feedback regulation because depending upon the necessity of the cell, the rate of a pathway is either increased or decreased. Diagrammatic representation of an allosteric enzyme. An allosteric enzyme consists of two types of subunit. One is C subunit, which means catalytic subunit. There is the binding site for the enzyme. And the other is the R subunit, regulatory subunit, where there is the binding site for the allosteric modulator. This is a picture taken from Leninger's Principles of Biochemistry. Can you tell me which is the chapter number and which is the figure number? How is the allosteric modulation working? Here is an example of allosteric inhibition in the formation of isoleucine from threonine. What is threonine? Threonine is an amino acid. What is isoleucine? Another amino acid. So isoleucine is produced from threonine. And isoleucine is the end product. And this end product is the allosteric inhibitor of the enzyme E1. Can you see enzyme E1? It is the first enzyme of the pathway. That first enzyme of the pathway is allosterically inhibited by the final product of the pathway. Remember, in almost all cases, allosteric inhibitor is one of the final end products of the same pathway. How do we identify whether an enzyme is allosteric or not? 
from the mm plot from a plot of substrate concentration on the x axis versus reaction velocity on the y axis can you see the shape of the plot first one is chymotrypsin it is not allosteric it is a typical rectangular hyperbola a typical michaelis mendian plot while you take the case of aspartate transcarbamylase it is an allosteric enzyme and the plot is a sigmoid plot it is somewhat like s shaped this is how we identify if an enzyme is allosteric the plot will be sigmoid otherwise it will be hyperbola how does the reaction kinetics look like when allosteric modulator is present in the reaction medium in the first graph is a typical sigmoid curve allosteric modulator is not present in the second graph there are three plots while in the middle blue plot allosteric modulator is not present in the upper red plot allosteric activator is present and in the lower black plot allosteric inhibitor is present and how do they differ when the allosteric activator is present the plot becomes steeper steeper means within a less substrate concentration range more of the product is formed because reaction velocity is more while in presence of an allosteric inhibitor the plot becomes more and more flat what does it mean even at a higher substrate concentration reaction velocity is not that much increasing which means the product formation is not that much increasing this is a typical graph keep in mind cymogens are inactive proteins also called the as proenzymes when they are produced in their gland they are inactive then they reach the site of action there they are activated how are they activated by the removal of one or more amino acids they are particularly important in two aspects one many of the protein digesting enzymes of our alimentary canal are produced as zymogens and two many of the proteins of the blood coagulation coagulation pathway also are produced in the inactive form here are the zymogens in our alimentary canal they are activated by some activator molecules they are also shown there and the active enzymes are also shown there remember all of them are concerned with digestion of proteins here is shown how the zymogens are activated two examples are the trypsinogen and chymotrypsinogen you come to trypsinogen trypsinogen consists of 245 amino acids it is activated into trypsin by enteropeptidase how is it activated the first six amino acids are removed which are the first one is valine then four residues of aspartic acid and a residue of lysine six amino acids are removed it is clearly seen in the diagram and in the functional trypsin molecule the seventh isoleucine onwards up to 245th amino acid they are present what about chymotrypsinogen it consists of 245 amino acids again and first of all trypsin is acting upon it making a cleavage between 
15th amino acid arginine and 16th amino acid isoleucine. Then alpha chymotrypsin is removing a fragment of two amino acids, 14th and 15th amino acid, and one more fragment, 147th and 148th amino acids. Now the functional chymotrypsin active molecule consists of three fragments. Fragments 1 to 13 amino acid, fragments 16 to 146 amino acid, and fragment 149 to 245 amino acids. They are accordingly named fragment A, B, and C. You see in this diagram the blood coagulation pathway. You see, prothrombin is an inactive zymogen. It is converted into active thrombin by factor 10A. Also, fibrinogen is inactive and it is converted into active soluble fibrin monomers by thrombin. So, these two are the examples of activation of thymogen from the blood coagulation pathway.